brilliant CS. So in this beautiful morning, we are having a talented session today and we welcome you, all of you, to this session. So let us have a knowledge sharing session with all the dignitaries sitting with me and then let us drive little bit towards the classical which entire world is following behind that. So with this, I would like to request to all of my colleagues to introduce each other and then we can start the session. Hi everyone, good morning. This is uh, Deepak Agarwal. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Auric. Uh, Auric is uh, bringing a comprehensive range of health and nutrition products, uh, blending the Ayurvedic purity with the modern convenience for a health conscious customer. Uh, my background is that I'm a chemical engineer from IIT Delhi and then I spent nine years working with the uh, Unilever across India, Switzerland, Singapore, across hair care, skin care, soaps and ice creams. Uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this panel and, and I hope to learn as much from this panel. Thank you. Hi. Uh, good morning. My name is Tarun Arora. I, I head a company called Zydis Wellness. Uh, so Zydis is known for uh, pharmaceutical as a group, but uh, Zydis Wellness has uh, two uh, area of uh, business. One is food and nutrition and why I'm here with brands like Compland, uh, Sugar Free, Gurkhandi, and Nutrilite. And uh, of course, they are personal care brands they can use them nicely. So, we are a consumer in uh, wellness business. We start with the uh, focus on uh, science based, research based, uh, evidence based uh, product categories, whatever we operate with personal care of the organizations. Uh, hope to be able to have a interesting session today. Thank you. Thank you. research in uh, 1999-2000 and uh, presently 24 years driving into the hardcore research for the nutraceutical towards more to DC sector in the pharmaceutical lines and I represent the Dabur India Limited uh, where I am heading the R&D division of healthcare. In Dabur division what happened we are having the three modalities of business. One is the healthcare. Uh, let me ask uh, about uh, this nutraceutical definition. What exactly? So as, as we know that nutraceutical is a very big terminal knowledge whenever we go for the world market and entire market is crowded with the nutraceutical many companies if you go to the either website or if you go to any retail counter any part of the world including India there will be floating of lot of product by the end of nutraceuticals everybody say but are we the divine or are we agree that any product available as a nutraceutical, are nutraceutical or not, I would like to request Mr. Tarunji from his experiences to focus to all of us, guide us that if all the right products are available are in the market, by the name of nutraceutical, are really nutraceutical or not. So, uh, thank you, it's an interesting question and I was thinking, uh, for, uh, you know, where does the nutraceutical come from? What is the meaning of nutraceutical? But um, I'm not an expert, but I'll give you my perspective of it. It's basically a convergence of uh, two spaces. Uh, one is the nutrition space and the other is pharmaceutical space. And that's how this terminology around nutraceuticals came out. Quite often, uh, <coughs> we have requirements of uh, macronutrients, micronutrients, and products that are scientifically produced, uh, which are which come with a pharma legacy, with the knowledge of pharmacy and uh, uh, life sciences, are provided in a nutritional in a certain way, which is what typically cl gets classified as nutraceuticals. And quite often, uh, whether these are supplements, uh, uh, specific supplements or general supplements, 
the expectation is that if you're having a nutrition products which is scientifically uh, designed, they will deliver a certain kind of uh, benefits to you. Uh, I know I need vitamins, I know I need vitamin C, but how much is enough? And uh, how much is uh, less than what I need and how much is too much? Because uh, quite often, uh, a whole lot of nutraceuticals in today's world is being consumed uh, uh, over the counter, not necessarily prescribed. Substantially, it has grown from a, a prescription path where the doctor would recommend you need a vitamin B complex, you would need this and you would need that. But as the evolution of nutraceuticals has happened, uh, typically because they are not therapeutic products, they have jumped over to uh, self-medication and self-help spaces. Unfortunately, the whole lot of uh, prevalence of products have not kept in pace with the consumption. And I think in the last five to seven years, uh, you know, with the COVID, which accelerated this whole, uh, you know, movement, a lot of us, you know, realized that I need immunity. And where will you get immunity? Maybe vitamin C, maybe zinc, etc. A lot of people are reading and there is social media which helps. Now, how much would be enough? What would be the right way to have it? All that is not easily available. So people are just running after consumption. So this uh, leapfrog from our doctor recommended ethical to our self-medication and has only gone up, and I'm talking about India context, but it's happened globally also in various forms. And uh, FSI is only, I would say the government regulatory is only trying to keep pace with it or catching up, but a lot of consumers shift has happened. And I'm not sure, and I don't think so in fact, not just sure, that enough scientific work goes into all the nutraceutical products that are available in the market. Some of them are actually generally great, but uh, some of them may be, you may end up having a excess dose or a shortage. <coughs> and that's why the role of evidence, scientific backing of this is extremely crucial in today's world. Uh, there are, uh, I, I mean, uh, clear examples of people having an excess of say a certain kind of uh, micronutrients, for example, vitamin D. Everyone seems to be falling short, but uh, how much do we talk about the toxicology of the fact that when you have excess of vitamin D, what happens to your body? Some of these things have actually resulted in very serious problems as well. And therefore, the balance and the uh, uh, right way of doing it is extremely necessary. Uh, good part is that FSI is doing something on this, acting on people who have not done homework and running into it, but that's really how the market is evolving. The regulatory is evolving, the consumer behaviors are shifting, and uh, yes. over to you, Paul. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Tarun, uh, for the explanation to the team. Now, as we know that uh, nutraceutical is a very vast word. Like, it is not a small, it is a very vast word. As rightly said by Mr. Tarun, that it is a, it's a guideline or a tracking between pharmaceutical and the supplement we call the nutraceutical which has a therapeutic potentiality in physiological benefit extending to the different health conditions, preventing conditions and also prophylactic requirement. So with this uh, I would like to ask, uh, put a question to Mr. Deepak like who was in a technocraft like he has been qualified in engineering and in a co-founder in a startup organization and done certain good works which we are sharing now. I would like to know that how you are mixing the technology, can you see the boom to the nutraceutical industry uh, to grow on? Thank you so much. So, uh, uh, as, a, as a marketeer and as a product guy, the way the social media intelligence, what I mean by that is we study a lot of keywords, we study a lot of trends in India as well as outside India. And that help us shape a certain vision of what consumers are looking for. Uh, as uh, Mr. Tarun just mentioned about vitamin D or vitamin C, one of the things that you will realize is if you look at the Google chart for keywords, the vitamin C had its own epiphany right at the COVID, where the demand for the search keywords of vitamin C was exponentially rising. Now these trends help us understand what consumers are looking for. Now one of the questions that we are always subscribed to is that the information that the consumer is searching for is it a true or a valid information or not? What I mean by that is, since all of us are 
in the middle of an influx of information. Some of it is false information, some of it is true information. So what we are learning from that information, is it true or not? At the end of the day, the first step for us is to understand the social media and try to understand what people are searching for. Then the second step is the delivery mechanism. That in order for us to deliver what consumers are looking for, how can we deliver that? Is, is the consumer looking for a swallowable tablet? Is he looking for a chewable tablet? Is he looking for a functional foods product? And that's where we then start speaking to a lot of consumers. Would you like this benefit to be given in a drink form, this benefit in a tablet form, this benefit in XYZ form? And then comes the third thing, how are we going to deliver the benefit? Which is where the science of active extracts help us understand. Now, you might believe that the turmeric that you are having in your uh, curries every single day is giving you benefit. It may, may not be. The reason being, the, the benefit in the turmeric comes from curcumin. Do you have curcumin as an active extract present in your nutraceutical? That's the important question. Do you have alkaloids from ashwagandha present in your nutraceutical? That's the important question. Now, you might be having turmeric in your curries every single day, but it may not be giving you any benefit. So that's the third part for us that how are we going to give the delivery mechanism? Is it through the curcumin coming from turmeric? Is it through alkaloids coming from ashwagandha? And that's how the three-step process happens for us, right from the social media, to the delivery mechanism, to the extracts. And that is how the entire landscape for us is noted from the consumer research to the delivery. Analogies which he can throw some light to all of us and we can learn from that. Because as we know that there are differential creator factor, like there is a product called functional food, there is a product category defined as a uh, health supplement, there is a product category called as food only, and there is a product category called nutraceutical. I would like to request Mr. Tarunji from his experience of vast marketing 
like what are the denominators defined for this poor when you go to india and other abroad countries and there is a good reason because there is convergence and there is innovation which is happening which is driving some of these uh, things uh, i think there is a i mean food today and i if i were to you know go a little beyond uh, your question today is uh, no more just food it's not just a way of we are say, uh, you know satiating your hunger but today food has started meaning a lot more and i would say that it is a way of uh, uh, meeting your nutritional needs also uh, now that happens when a lot of my players talk about this roti has this much fiber and this much calcium and this much so the moment you start breaking down your regular food into what it has through your uh, breakdown of your nutritional tables you start not seeing it as food but you start seeing it as a functional food or a delivery of a certain uh, nutrition Uh, to add to this, uh, not just the government, uh, I can say which drove this uh, agenda, but uh, globally also, there is a whole lot of uh, opportunity of fortification of food, where a certain amount of uh, fortification is being done through uh, oil or any other uh, you know basic uh, food products, which is uh, you know making it more helpful and uh, improving the nutritional health of the consumers. so i would say there is clearly the supplements and uh, which stand out where you add you take it over and above your food products but food is going beyond what it stood for and uh, there is a some amount of convergence you will see uh, in, in terms of at least how you consume some of these things and what they are going to be doing uh, the awareness amongst the consumers for need for these is gone up and uh, therefore you will see some of these things Maybe people could add because he's also practicing. Sure. So I'll I'll generally like to take in my team a simple example. Uh, when you take uh, milk from a local milkman, that's fresh milk. When you buy milk from a whole or mother dairy, that's a packaged milk. When you see that milk has uh, a low fat milk, it becomes a health food. Okay. When you see that that milk is enhanced with vitamin D, it's a functional food. When you see that vitamin D in a tablet form, it is essentially a nutraceutical, right? So what I'm trying to say is that why does it happen? Because unfortunately or fortunately, I can't comment on that. But in India, vitamin D tablet is generally prescribed by a doctor. He does some diagnosis, finds that vitamin D is missing in your body, and prescribes you a certain dose of vitamin D over a certain period of time. And then social media came in, and social media said that why do I need to? a wait for a doctor to prescribe me and to run some tests why don't i put vitamin d in my own diet and that's when they started res- researching oh, hypothetically orange has vitamin d but they don't realize that you need to consume 15 oranges a day in order to consume the same amount of vitamin d and that's when the smart market you started saying that every day you are consuming a glass of milk why don't you add vitamin d to that that's functional food right now you go to us or philippines there people are going to go shopping for supplements just like they are buying grocery so you will go to a walgreens you look for a vitamin d and consume it in your daily lifestyle you don't need to run your diagnostics because you know that at the end of the day by the time you turn 40 vitamin d is going to be lesser or missing in your body so so the way i define it is that functional foods reduces the barriers to entry uh, consuming a milk and ours with vitamin d is much easier Then consuming a vitamin D tablet because a tablet makes you feel that yeah, I'm a bimaru, am I ill? But a functional foods like a milk is like okay, I'm consuming a milk. This is a better form of milk. So there are no barriers to entry. So in my head, uh, a functional food enhanced with nutraceutical ingredients is is the way where India has started. But at the same time, it is slowly and slowly graduating to a nutraceutical pure play format. Because of the education that it is coming towards, it. that's how I li- define it. Not sure if Tarunji, I answered it, but this is how I would like to give an example, uh, which would later turn into a toxicity level. So that needs to be addressed. Right? I, I take an example uh, of how it is done at a startup organization like us, uh, Oric. Uh, 
I, I work in the Ayurveda space and all our ingredients are inspired from Ayurveda. There is a literature on Ayurveda called Ayurveda uh, Pharmacopoeia of India, which has defined all the active extracts. It has defined the minimum recommended daily intake. It has defined the maximum recommended daily intake. Okay. It has defined that uh, when you are talking about turmeric, what is the percentage active extract of curcumin present in turmeric, for example. Now when we define products and when we make products, generally we always work on the minimum RDI and not on the maximum RDI. That's number one. So we keep that cushion. Okay. Number two is that our delivery form factor, we then understand whether people are going to consume three drinks a day or three tablets a day and therefore we divide that minimum RDI into that. So generally at our company at Auric, every particular portion is less than 25% RDI. And therefore if people are going to consume two to three in a day, they are still lesser than minimum RDI. Because they are not getting fortification only from the products that they are having from Auric, they are also getting fortification from numerous other products. And I am sure that uh, uh, experts, uh, since you took the example of milk, they do the same thing. That they know what is the vitamin D fortification that is required in one serve of milk, what is the minimum, what is the maximum, and what is the average vitamin D going from other sources of food as well. So there is a lot of research that goes and people are really making sure that what you are getting is below the levels of toxicity, is what I feel. Last one week before, uh, like one uh, patient, elderly patient reported to me with itching all over the body. Like entire body is feeling of itching. Then after that, I have asked his associate, what are the products or what are the medicament exactly gentleman is consuming now? So you will not believe it that the least whatever given to uh, my associate was a tremendous least like we see like a PhD basics. Okay. So now he is taking a lot of product. He bought from something from London, something from Singapore and mixed it together. And when I have analyzed the 22 element, what we call as a toxicity level in human blood, is called 22 element toxicity. Like the copper, magnesium, nickel, cobalt, magnesium. All the details will be listed. Unfortunately, 22 elements, Delhi is not available. So I have forced it to analyze 11 elements and found that the person is having high copper limit. And the justification is that they are consuming the product of certain XYZ company, cannot say here, so which are higher than the color limit what a copper man can take it. But still then, the person was having the low hemoglobin, what you call normocytemic anemia, and he is taking the more ferric oxides, but he is lacking the all the cases. So anyway, that entire product has been changed and he is under medication for monthly review. So this is what we call the deprocyticals are not safe always, which my question will be that to all the learned uh, dignitaries here and many people are sitting here also learning. So toxicity is one part in nutraceutical we encounter and that is why we always envisage that R&D should be intensive for nutraceutical, not like the flooded of the product where they were nutraceutical and thanks to government of India who has released the new guideline 2020 basically for food and supplement chapter 6 which are changed now from PFI has allowed multiple people and that's what uh, 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 that particularly Tarunji and also Deepakji also saying that how the regulatory system can be more stringent but the more stringent people will strike, people go agitation, higher stringent people say that we cannot sell market so what is exactly we always advise the patient and consumer that the read, educate and take. So that's why always we give the notifications in terms of our medical education, in terms of our continued medical study to everybody who are sitting here and in outside also. So now uh, as this uh, part is already uh, taking care, now ask uh, Dipakji and also my colleague uh, Dr. Komal like to give a uh, like narrative. What are their experiences for the probiotics? And is there any limit probiotic to be restricted? And how to identify probiotic in the final uh, Right. So, uh, I'll, I'll start with first a, a thought that it is well researched that your digestive system is actually the second brain of the body. What it means is that if you are going to keep your digestive system well and healthy, uh, you are going to have a much better, healthier, longer life. So, that's the first thing. Uh, the context is set. 
that why do we think is something not good? Uh, although sometimes we believe that uh, around festivals uh, are coming and it's okay to overeat, but knowing the limit of your digestion system is extremely important. No probiotics or postbiotics is going to help you if you're not going to take care of the basic parameters of your digestion system. So that's the first belief. The second belief is that uh, if your digestion system is so important and if you need to take care of it, is probiotics helpful to you? Uh, yes, it is because your gut health has microflora and microbiotics and those need to be kept in a good state of mind in order to make sure that a digestion system is working as it should be. Okay, And therefore the concept comes prebiotics is essentially the food that goes to the the bacteria and the postbiotics is to maintain the hygiene of the digestion stomach. My problem today is that uh, these are highly temperature sensitive nutraceutical ingredients and therefore the delivery mechanism with which you are getting these ingredients is extremely important. I'll give an example. When you get uh, probiotic shots like Yakult, uh, they have maintained a great temperature which is necessary to maintain the hygiene of the probiotics. But if a shopkeeper does not keep it at the required temperature, at the required storage, on the shelf or in their warehouse, it doesn't help. Sometimes when you go to a shop at 9 o'clock in the morning, the delivery vans have kept the stock outside the shop for a couple of hours waiting for the shop to be cleaned, the shelf to be empty, it doesn't help. And those are the basic parameters that need to be taken care of because probiotics are extremely sensitive to temperature. And that's why the delivery mechanism becomes extremely important. Can your probiotics be delivered in a shelf-stable format? And that's where sometimes the tablets and the capsules come in. But when the tablets and capsules are being processed, are they being subscribed to a high temperature? So overall, what I want to summarize for this question is that digestion system is extremely important. The basic parameters of digestion system needs to be taken care of before like acidity and bloating before you start consuming probiotics and the delivery mechanism of probiotics is extremely important because if the form factor in which you are consuming is not temperature stable then essentially what you are consuming is a sugar syrup you are not consuming anything which is going to give benefit to your digestive system uh, that, that's how I would answer this question So when we intake the average human body temperature itself is 37 degrees and it has to pass through the actions of stomach where a lot of, lot of chemicals would be acting on the intake and the wild juice effects will also take have an effect on the intake of probiotics. So how can they pass all these uh, negative factors and then get stick into the gut so that they can develop and multiply in the gut? Resistant up to 80 degrees centigrade. Okay. Now what we do actually, we do we do the encapsulations. So with the encapsulation, only thing we have to identify is that the product, except acrylic, acrylic is a patented formulation. Other than acrylic, other uh, probiotic 22 varieties, whatever we use will add in the product, they are heat resistant in 80 degree, even 90 degree also. That has they are sustained. That's why what happened presently probiotics and prebiotics. Also is a critical part of we call basically dysectrical dysfunctional uh, dysphagia, like it called GIT tract disorder. Wherever person feels like I am getting a stomach ulcer, like ulcer pain is very terrible pain. When a person says we call it a fake ulcer, fake ulcer. Around 34 percent of the humanity in India, human, are suffering from the dysphagia, which is a basically uh, we call dyspepsia. So what happened there, like? They feel pain in the abdomen, they feel bloating, they feel flatulences, they feel elongated, extended abdomen, 
and sometimes because of continuous uh, you know like uh, pain of that they feel like pain during the eating of the food okay and the complication finally goes so what we do basically we add the probiotics of 15 to 20 gram in terms of cfus so that is a part of that which my question was there what are the cfus in actually we say good to body or bad to body because there is no such guideline neither in medical council nor in the food safety standard nor in the EMEA, nor EPSA, nobody has identified that what is the probiotic limit is maximum allowed. So now coming to that what happened, the, the probiotics has been encapsulated and when they come to contact with the water, any, any moisture they multiply and the next process already told by Madam here. Okay, now uh, coming to the fact that, okay, sir, what was from here, please. Sir, it is now we call it as a metabolic framework. Basically, the synergy between the prebiotics and probiotics is very, very important. Like uh, the fiber that we need to, the intake of fiber should be minimum of this is should be 25 grams per day. If we enhance the fiber intake, that will also interfere with the absorption of minerals. At the same time, the probiotics that will, uh, like the microflora that will flourish in our gut, is very, very important. So that synergy has to be there. That has to be. Mr. Rao, your question is very specific, uh, like I want to add. My answer is yes, uh, that uh, uh, micro got or the got microflora. Uh, there are four uh, microbes and also one enzyme which are directly related to the diabetes. And uh, basically, I am into the more research and we look Dabur will be coming the product maybe launching in 2025. And I am leading that. Two products we are leading now on the, on the probiotic. One product is for diabetes, or there is a metabolic syndrome. And second one is coming for your memory and cognition. So you are rightly said, lots of research has not been conducted for microflora and the probiotics. Yes, probiotics are related to the, uh, that is basically for use, the, uh, the two activities is conducted. One activity is called insulinemic activity, by which we can say that, okay, persons already have the capacity to release the insulin. That's what we measure in the place the person called fasting insulin. Many doctors do not prescribe to identify the, what is the fasting insulin. They say, okay, go for my blood insulin, which is not directly related to the fasting insulin. So now uh, the fasting insulin is directly reciprocal to the gut flora. And also uh, the gut flora is also directly related to the memory and cognition. So that trial is still under progress. We hope to track the product by market to 0 to 5. Uh, that we are working out. No? I am heading that particular division on that to come out. And with association with Two more organizations were planning for that. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Can I, can I ask one question? Yeah. Sir, sir, you introduce yourself so that it is easy to understand uh, your background and then we can help with each other along the same platform. No problem. Uh, my name is Amit Singh Kumbhav. Uh, I understand we have a bit late, so apologies <coughs> if we already covered this, but we're trying to understand the size of the commercial market. Sorry, it's not a biological or medical question. Size of the commercial market for this area, uh, for neuter products. We've got one of the products we're looking at is like gummies for uh, children, protein bars. So if you can help us understand the size. We've got a lot of expertise in manufacturing and product development, but commercially we're a bit weak. So we just need some steer to make some uh, commercial decisions. So. Uh so let me just give you, I, I think there are other parts of the world and it's a good way of, uh, you know, uh, nutraceutical space to grow in the daily consumption space. So, but they are very small, but they're growing at a disproportionate fa uh, pace. Uh, so there would be anything from high double digits to maybe a triple digits also for some uh, places. But the size of each of the players that I know or I've seen for these form factors at least is very small. Some people have tried, some large companies have tried, didn't succeed. So it's also a work to do. Uh, substantially dependent upon <coughs> online space. Uh, offline is growing. Bars, offline is growing. More so in bigger cities, more so in uh, uh, food shops, uh, standalone, modern trade, kind of more visible, more experiential spaces. Uh, but consumer behavior of saying that it's part of my grocery basket, I don't think would do not exist. Gummies in India are disproportionately expensive to what you'll probably find outside. So, so this market has, on the face of it, good potential. Uh, 
how will you differentiate, how will you build? Because you can't just say, it's a large market, I'm just going to be participating. If you come into this market, you also have to come from a point of view, how will I shape the market? Because then if you want to be participant in the market, uh, just these form factors, I'm fine talking more about it. If it's a thousand, two thousand crore market and you try to be 50 crore, 100 crore, then yeah, I mean, you'll need some level of differentiation. But the potential is much higher because these form factors can really help bring the nutraceuticals in a daily routine to a larger set of audience, something for the kids, something for the adults, something for the geriatric. And uh, that can really help shape this substantially. That's my bit of uh, perspective. He is also doing this market in a way different way, maybe. I think the most important point uh, that uh, Parunji mentioned is uh, mapping the market. So for Protein Bar, when it was launched uh, eight years back, at that moment it was thought that it is going to take away the market from the protein powders. But it, that never happened. Uh, it actually started taking away some market from the chocolate consumption. What I mean by that is people started, 10 gram protein bar started calling itself as a protein bar because it was playing on the taste front and not on the protein front. Right, uh, but on the market side, absolutely agree. Uh, at this moment, uh, the protein bar market would be, in, in my opinion, anywhere from uh, six six fifty crores to eight hundred crores. There are not many large players, but it is taking away some of the market share from the chocolate consumption. Uh, that's an important marker, and therefore, whenever I have to launch any product, I always try to look at what is this, what is it replacing. That's the first question, and the second question is. Uh, is your product going to be part of gaining a market share or is it going to be part of a building a market development? Uh, are you going to create a new category or are you going to take away the market share from the existing category? Uh, dummies, FFS and tablets are the two places where Auric is playing today. Okay? Uh, we believe that it is creating a market but also taking away some market. For example, uh, if you have a vitamin D gummy, it might take away some market from a vitamin D tablet. But as uh, Tarunji mentioned, it's super expensive. A vitamin D tablet would be somewhere around uh, 3, 4, 5 rupees. But a vitamin D gummy would be around 20, 25 rupees. So it probably doesn't make sense. But for people who would otherwise not take a vitamin D tablet because they don't want to visit a doctor, do a diagnostic test, they might take a gummy. Uh, and therefore, the smarter ways come in. That can you market your gummy or your effervescent tablet for functional benefits rather than single letter vitamins uh, because there is lesser competition there. You would not find a hair fall tablet but you will find a hair fall effervescent tablet and that's the differentiation that people make when they are creating a market versus gaining a market share. So that's a kind of example. Uh, and I would also like to add not from the marketing phase because we say that Very useful, thank you. Understand how, uh, since the formulations are evolving, even we are connecting with the last question, we, we talked about gummies. So in gummies, there is a challenge of sugar reduction also coming into the space. So uh, there are other health issues that are also coming in. So maybe people are using sugar uh, alternatives there. So we have formulation challenges uh, when it comes to incorporating these biotics. So I want to understand what kind of hurdles are we facing from the Indian regulator, FSSA ITR, uh, in you know, uh, marketing these products or new formulations. So yeah, that's my question if that's clear. Perspective, uh, a lot of active ingredients that goes into the supplements in US actually come from India. So therefore there is an abundance of human capital on creating these uh, these active extracts. So I personally don't see uh, a particular hurdle. Uh, I think the only uh, guidance or request to any entrepreneurs from my side is always the fact that make sure that the basics are correct. Uh, in the sense that uh, the active extracts that you are using, the form factor that you are using should make sense. At the end of the day, if you are giving just a sugar laden gummy, it is not giving any benefit to anyone. Uh, but I'm not sure if I answered the question correctly. Uh, happy to see if Dr. Mishra can add anything. Thank you.
so can also product development or the placement you are speaking for uh, particularly for the formulation the new okay. actives that we are bringing in okay. along with the other ingredients uh, i will help that figure uh, then you can add madam uh, what happens so can as your uh, question is very valid uh, point of the uh, product development view two uh, particular facts we always because our hardcore is already always day and night we do so each a gummy like suppose we take gummy of 4 gram gummy which is a standard pack size of 4 gram gummy to like as tarun ji and uh, like deepak ji also said that uh, the product need to be palatable what happens basically when people say gummy gummy is an entry to india maybe a few years back it was not very randomly available so now what happened the gummy needs to be more palatable so why comes the palatability and to keep the cost at the constant level the cheapest source of sweetness is the white sugar <coughs> and sucrose okay what is called refined so usually a gummy contains 37 to 40% of the white sugar as a consistency and that is the basically fact but what happens like we are coming up with the alternate sugars like sugar alcohols we uh, add that sugar alcohols and sugar alcohols uh, in the fssi comes under the prebiotics basically the fibers is the fibers so what happened basically like the research happened by the efsa european food safety standard authority of uh, efsa and also jfo japan food authority it is this source they have identified that the sugar alternative called xylitols and other you know like classification whatever is there they explain that okay these are the these are the uh, particularly for the fibers but india also has introduced that that is one parameter but that is not the solution because cost again goes up because uh, like uh, extreme is like this like tarun ji and uh, deepak ji who are market you know like they want to place the product we are and make the product but the hard thing happens when the product is developed but not placed in market is that is called the product is not developed at all so we search the alternate sources alternate sources we found like banana sugar is recently come up apple sugar is also another coming sugar because by what happened my simple carbohydrate conversation has to come down so that with the alternate solution sugar what we are finding that like we have recently developed the product of probiotic my last organization when we made the probiotic by the brown sugar so brown sugar is not directly like health hazard like white sugar but cost is not very health life so you want to you know again uh, tell to the regulator that we have this product so you need to add more pages so these are the two challenges that i've, I've seen uh, how do we address this do we add new pages and uh, you know make the product or uh, is uh, is there a way out that's the question okay uh, so dr vidya is that i mentioned they can establish tomorrow this solution what is minimum maximum presently there is no minimum there is no maximum but though people feel that 2 billion is the basic requirement so first question is the answer madam there is no such guideline is there minimum maximum though the natural uh, proverb or the particularly market trend is 2 billion uh, cfu <coughs> Now question is coming how to establish the self life because I don't have answers. Still I'm searching what are the markers or what are the standards we can identify the shear is the gummy because achieve the uh, that particular probability at least for nine to twelve months at least at least. But usually at the four million, but we do not have answer that how much remain at the end. We really don't have answer on that. Thank you. Any more, or shall I uh, engage my distinguished guest for other discussions? She is asking. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Just give to the madam for another. Often, uh, startup ecosystem talk about innovation and sustainability a lot. So, how uh, how often do you consider byproduct as a mainstream for your extraction in your companies? And two, how active are you also in collaborating with? food processing industries in your supply chain so uh, any brand uh, and therefore uh, as as a brand oric our story is not around sustainability our story is around ayurveda and therefore for us uh, anything to do with ayurveda is of interest to us uh, but uh, uh, i have seen 
specifically very interesting entrepreneurs outside India who have built a very interesting story around, for example, once the coffee is extracted from the coffee beans, what can you do with those coffee beans? It can be converted into a manure for growing plants and therefore a gardening startup has come in which is building its theory around sustainability using the, the coffee pods that are left over. Now, now, can you create a brand around brand uh, byproducts? Absolutely yes. Because specifically in bigger cities like Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, the sustainability is reaching a peak where people, uh, today my daughter, nine-year-old daughter is being taught in the school. Uh, the unfortunate part is when I was a kid, I was being taught ki, uh, safe paper. Uh, today she's been taught use paper and save plastic. So there, there are cycles that keep coming and going, but I think byproducts and sustainability is very interesting marketing story. Uh, if that answers your question, right? Uh, sorry, what was your second question? So, so I was asking on uh, how active are you? For all the foods and the innovation we work with a lot of uh, suppliers, ingredient manufacturers in India. Specifically on the Ministry of Food Processing, uh, I'm, I'm open for collaboration if there are opportunities. Uh, I think I've visited NIFCAM five times in the last three years, four years. So uh, we are always open to discussion with the uh, folks. So if you have an interesting idea, if you have an interesting way of collaboration, I'm always happy to discuss it in person and see how can we take it forward. So uh, I think uh, from a byproduct uh, perspective, I think everyone, each of the companies over a long period of time have tried to make business out of byproduct. So therefore, in my mind, sustainability is not necessarily more expensive, it has economic benefits also. And therefore, theoretically, as well as practically demonstrated by several examples, uh, have we able to build some business, whether you are selling just the byproduct or making even a brand out of the byproduct. That's on your uh, time, imagination, and your focus on it. But clearly, anyone who's a business <coughs> does recognize that even when you sell scrap, it has a value attached to this. So therefore, uh, sustainability should not be seen as a, a good because somebody's regulator is ask, asking us to do. Uh, focus has to be what can I do from my economic value as well as for the environment. And I think uh, now enough uh, examples. What maybe the children are learning, but I think we all recognize that we can uh, do good to the environment beyond it. It not, need not always come at a higher cost uh, or, a, or a tax of it in a certain way. Uh, enough examples and uh, you know, some of those things uh, where some of the discharge, some of the stuff we use in our plants, how do we achieve a zero liquid discharge in a plant is also by utilizing in a certain way uh, that we can. Uh, that's one. Second, uh, on collaboration, I think we as a company have kept a smaller quantity, but we are very science focused and results have gone substantial. Mm -hmm. We realize that even if I had 50% more uh, staffing in my uh, R&D, I don't think we'll be able to reach <coughs> what we are going to do because there is far more interesting work which is happening outside and it's better to work with other partners do other innovation. So whether it is academic and I think for example is what I'm talking about there. Working with other institutions like CFTR, I we work with I mean R and D is based on Ahmedabad, but we are not restricted to where we are. Uh, we we are very, very open and very keen to work with various small or large organizations because we know we can't do everything ourselves. So very open and I think it's it's gonna be necessary. Anyone who imagines that will large organizations have announced that so much open innovation they'll do, global organization. So anyone of us who can imagine that they will manage on their own is being all the best, but I think we need, everyone needs help. And it's, it's an ecosystem which will deliver. So very happy if you have any suggestions, ideas, or more to Yeah, I think to uh, Mr. Tarun also, like, he is right in the app aspect also. Like he, that is how, the tower is already having now, which is around 300 crore market. So we are adding up that he, can we do certain advantages of metabolic syndrome and also the cardiac. So that is again my cognition, we are going to uh, tie up with it, to Hyderabad.
same way also are like uh, different types of molecular research like nuclear CFRI. We always go and you know, reach to them for anything which you can build the nation as a best and best product at such a time if you go to the market, but with science. So, yeah. So, uh, I think uh, now the timing is knocking. It's 11.30 nearing now. So, I should say uh, thanks to Dr. Komal and uh, <coughs> distinguished uh, personality like Mr. Gaurav Narora and also entrepreneur uh, Mr. Deepak Agrawal along with uh, all of the learned people who are sitting in the diocese. Thank you all of you. <coughs> and from this meeting at this time.